Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, today it's the turn for us to talk about, let's talk about ICM. Now we've been through quite a number of these kit manufacturers um, and I wanted to, to make this one of the later ones that we looked at because I've got very positive feelings for them. I'm not going to wrap it up and I'm going to be completely upfront about it. So all the kits you see in front of me here, just the latest that have come through early December. Um, these are all provided at no charge to me uh, and most of these are either uh, given away to other modellers or they, they get um, uh, given to charity. Uh, I've, I've given a couple to charity, I've given quite a few of them to many of the viewers and subscribers in fact. Uh, and there's been quite a few of you made uh, uh, donations to Ukraine charities which is all, all good and helps their country in their hour of need of course. So. <laughs> I know that people say, oh, yeah, I say nice things about ICM because he gets them for nothing, you know. But that's not the reason I've got the positive vibe. I think that's helped a little bit. But I think 80% of my positive feelings for ICM is really about the way that they've performed in the most difficult conditions. And, and you know, there are quite a high number. I think somebody told me there's over 30 uh, different model manufacturers in Ukraine. But what I think makes ICM stand out amongst not only them, but all the ones that are not in a country that's at war and has been invaded, it's just the fact that they seem to be able to produce. They're very creative. They've got lots of lots of ideas, and they just keep on producing new new tooled kits all the time. Got a new tool kit here. This is a new tool kit. This is a new tool. I mean, just just examples. New tool. New tool. New tool. That one's obviously a mixture of some figures. Um, I think the figures might be new too, in fairness. Obviously, the Beaufort's been out now for 18 months. But uh, they're also very clever at doing that thing of mixing up new and old tools as well. But they're just so so good at this. You know, we've had... Um, 2023, I think, has made ICM uh, look so outstanding because compared to the other manufacturers, they just haven't really performed that well in terms of bringing new products to the market. You know, and, and if, if a country that's having such difficulties, you know, um, as the Ukraine are, if ICM um, have risen to the top, really, in terms of that country's manufacturers, but they've risen way beyond that, haven't they? Because, you know, we've got, we've got Airfix. I, I, I like Airfix. I'm a big fan of Airfix. I'm a British, obviously, and a, it's a British company. I want to support them. I've got to be frank, I don't think they've performed very well this year. I, I think they came out with a very uh, unambitious um, new release schedule. Um, and there has been one or two things that have been um, additional to that. Like, for example, we've had the new Messerschmitt 410 and we had the Sea King helicopter, which were not mentioned at the start of the year. But they seem to have a confused strategy. And, and, and I've had conversations with them. I'm not, not here to criticise them or anybody else. I just hope that they do it differently in the future because... They have an announcement in January and say what they're going to do. And then it takes much longer than predicted for the products to arrive. Other products arrive that weren't predicted. It all looks a bit haphazard. ICM came out in January with their catalogue. And they have stuck to it. With, with the only exception that they've had a bit of an issue with is this, the new B26 Marauder. There's been, I think there's been one or two production issues, but... Uh, no wonder, given what's going on in the country, and I don't know all the details, but th th I knew probably one of the first people to know that there was going to be a delay on that, and I've been watching it with amusement, other people talking about it, oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming, I think, no, it's not coming until next year, but anyway, and um, that's the only one, really, that's that's a big project for them as well, 48 scale Marauder, which I'm really looking forward to, but uh, apart from that, they've pretty much nailed it, as they promised, and come out with these new tools, and every month when they've been sending me these kits, it's it's just astonishing to me that they keep coming out with new kits, new tools, and it's every month. So why can't Airfix do that? Why can't you know Revell do? I mean, they're, they're, you've probably seen my views on Revell. I, I won't say too much more, Brendan, because uh, if, if I sound like I'm being a bit critical about Airfix, it's because I have a passion for them. Revell, I've kind of lost that passion completely a long time ago, I think, and I, I don't really care anymore. Um, that's not fair in a way because I want them to succeed uh, and you know they have produced some nice kits they produced that uh, that F15 last year which was quite a nice kit the 72nd scale Eagle Strike Eagle 
So they can produce some nice stuff when they want to, and the hurricane that came out with that wasn't too bad. But they just seem to have lost their way in terms of this, this issue of new products, you know. Now times are tough, you know, the, the world economy is um, all over the place, it's struggling. In Japan I know they've been struggling a bit and that's affected Tamiya and, and Zukimura. Zukimura didn't come to the Telford Scale Model World, for example. And that was a real shame if they were watching. I'm going to do a separate programme on them very soon. It was a real shame not to see their their president and his and his guys because we, I, I really enjoy seeing them actually. They're nice people and they've got a real passion for modelling. But they've um, <clears throat> they've had some delays as well. So there's been a lot of problems. So you look at ICM and think, wow, you know these guys have what they've achieved has been astonishing, really. You know, and they've put Airfix and t to put Airfix and Tamiya and Zukimura in the shade in some respect is a very impressive feat uh, to have achieved, and they have done that. Um, so, yeah, I think it needs to be set, really. And uh, I'm going to say to you right now, in terms of this year, they are my kit manufacturer of the year by miles, quite frankly, because they've outperformed everybody by a huge margin. So there's, there's no contest. It's not... I'm not going to sort of make this a clickbaity thing where I say, guess which manufacturer... Because it's obvious which is the best this year. The best manufacturer for innovation and new products is ICM. And there is no contest with anybody else. Airfix don't even... No, sorry, you can't hold a candle to them, you know. Um, there just hasn't been enough um, new stuff. I mean, the Buccaneer wasn't really new. It's only got, I think, two sprues that are different. So that doesn't really count, even though that is a product I'm going to enjoy a lot. But these guys, as I say, you know, they're bringing out figures and pilots and doing a lot of things that we've been asking for. And they do it at a... I'm, I'm, I keep mentioning Airfix because these guys at ICM are actually in that same market, Airfix, Revell market. They're very affordable. I mean, you know, we've got here this new one, which is the 30-second scale. Yeah, so they're, they're nice big figures. World War II pilots of British Naval Aviation, and this is retailing, I think it's retailing about £16, £17. They're not expensive kits, you know, they're not, whereas Tamiya and Zokimura are very expensive, you know, they are perhaps engineered at a price to be premium products. Uh, but these are, you know, we, we've seen some of these, like we saw the, the Sally Bomber I reviewed recently, which was absolutely incredible. Um, and of course, we had that amazing uh, these helicopters they brought out as well. We had the uh, the Sikorsky uh, um, TH54, the, the Sky Crane helicopter, huge thing, you know, um, absolutely massive kit. You know, I think it's retailing for 135, 140 pounds. Uh, that that's a monster. Um, and, and they brought out some absolutely stunning Cobras um, attack helicopters. They brought out the Vietnam set where they'd actually got um, a mixture of their own tooling at 48 scale with the Bronco and the special hobby tooled Cobra. Um, and they're doing clever things as well as the quality being good, they're doing clever things. Now it's not all beer and skittles, nobody's perfect, you know. So I'm going to say a couple of things which I've already passed on to ICM previously. A couple of areas where they could improve. One is the instructions. Um, they're very good generally. They are very, very good instructions, much better than <coughs> excuse me, some of the Far Eastern manufacturers. Just one or two areas where I think they could have a bit more wording, a bit more clarity about, especially for things like I mentioned the big helicopter. That was the one that, that really struck you because it had lots of these delicate engineering components of the engine and the gearbox and all that kind of, and it didn't tell you what, what was what and it was quite hard to follow so I actually passed that on to ICM and I sent them some examples of other people's instructions in a similar scenario and uh, and, and that was passed on they said yeah well obviously there's a long lead time gestation period with these kits it's probably about 12 18 months so that will take a while for them to further develop their style I guess but um, it certainly wasn't rejected you know um, I did also ask them the other thing <laughs> The other thing that really came to into focus as an issue was particularly on the on the Sally Bomber because on the Sally Bomber it has 130 windows and it really needs a masking set and I, I've made this point now they're a bit more resistant on the masking sets because I think it's an extra cost for them and I, I think it's something they'd have to go and buy in from a you know a third party supplier whether that would be in Ukraine or maybe Edward or something like that. It's clearly going to have a cost for them and they've been a bit resistant to it. I think the problem is, I, 
as I've said before, I think if they don't want to go down that road, um, they've got to be careful about the subject matter because I think the Sally, to, to say that and then provide the Sally Bomber, which has got 130 windows, and you're going to have to go and buy a third party mask, wh wh whichever way you do it, you know, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I think that it's not, not a wise subject to perhaps have introduced it without a mask. So it's all about about balance, isn't it? And perhaps choosing their choosing their battles or choosing their subjects wisely. So there's, there's a couple of areas where there are some areas that they can improve in. Um, I've I've also mentioned about maybe on some of the smaller scale aircraft having stands and things like that. But you know, when you look at the moulding quality of some of these kits, they're just outstanding. And we've seen so many reviews where I've uh, I mean, they have got one or two where there's been uh, a reboxing. The reboxing I mentioned special hobby. They've also done it with uh, Revell, one or two of the old Revell mouldings, toolings. Things like the, I think it was the REF set. I think that turned out to be the Revell original tooling, didn't it? The one that had the the dog and uh, REF personnel. But here we've got brand new tooling. Um, you know, with new new personnel. There'll be a review of this going up. Um, probably out there already. If you haven't seen it already. <clears throat> it will certainly be around very soon, but they're coming out with interesting things, you know. Uh, Goulash Canon, the mobile field kitchen for the German army, World War II. Uh, you know, and the, again, there's something very unusual. Gotha, the Gotha aircraft, the one that was not to be confused with the really big uh, Gothas or the World War I Gothas. This is the one that was actually a glider, a transport glider to be towed, and the Germans decided to add a couple of engines on it. So again, it's a Obviously, I think in Ukraine there's probably quite a lot of things in their museums which gives them some good material to go at. Same with the Hanami. But they never stop sort of innovating, and you know they've started doing quite a lot of British subjects as well, like the uh, that we've got with the Beaufort there. That was something that people didn't really expect, and they've got the Marauder coming through. So they're, they're doing more and more uh, interesting subjects. Just wondering if it shows us a fairy swordfish in the background on this one. I don't know if that means that they're going to do that. That'd be nice. Because they've done a few interesting off-the-wall aircraft, you know. People sometimes say that they're a little bit, um, perhaps not the most detailed on things like the interiors. But I think that's true. Um, but, I mean, I've, if, if I had a pound for every hour I've spent on aircraft interiors that ne never, ever get seen by anybody ever again, and I'm thinking particularly of my Tamiyar, 30 second scale Mustang, which had a uh, huge amount of time and effort put into it with um, wood effects on the floor and all sorts of things. And it never got seen, so you know, a bit of a waste of time. So there's a balance to be struck, isn't there? I think when you've got things that are open, then yeah, there needs to be some good detail, I think. If it's all closed up, then really, I'm not sure. It's adding cost, isn't it, that you have to pay at the end of the day as the customer, so. I think they've got a really good balance. Um, some areas, as I said, I'd like to see uh, pilots. Another one that I've mentioned to them is pilots actually in flight pilots, so that you can, uh, if we had stands and pilots, we've said this to Airfix, of course, and it, I was going to say it's fallen on deaf ears. That's not quite fair because <laughs> on the gannet, they've actually uh, inc included on theirs, they included the uh, pilot, but not a good one. Not a good one. I don't know why they bothered. It's like oh, you're just drawing attention to that. You haven't invested in sculpting a pilot. But we need pilots um, that are in flight position so that you can have the option to, you know, have an aircraft in flight. And it's, it's something a lot of the manufacturers are, are letting us down on a little bit. One that doesn't do that, that isn't, isn't letting us down, of course, is Tamiya. We'll talk about them separately. Um, so it can be done, you know, and then they do it really well. Um, and they give you a stand on some of their models as well, so it can be done. It's just a question of, I suppose, you know, if you're the boss at ICM or another manufacturer like Airfix, you know, these guys have to sit there and think, well, how much will a pilot cost us to sculpt a pilot? And, you know, if it's a, a World War II, you know, for example, like this pilot here, uh, they've done a separate set. Well, I don't mind, personally, I don't mind buying a separate set. Excuse me. But I think that's probably the way that they should go. I think you should do it separately. Um, so, you know, an individual tooling for those characters. And then they can sell them as separate for those that want to buy them. And that way they don't end up with added, added cost and higher priced kits that are not necessary. But those of us that want to have pilots and stands and things, can, can get them, you know. That's the way forward. That's the way forward, I think. Give people the choice. 
Uh, and if, if it's a question of cost and uh, profitability, then that's, that's the way for them to go, I think. But haven't they been an amazing company? You know, they, they've come up with so many, um, I mean, they did that, so many interesting variants of things, you know, like the Paravane Heinkel one, the HE111. They did the Mistel, uh, which has got the, um, it's the Junkers, isn't it, with the BF109 on top. It's a guided bomb anti-shipping aircraft. <clears throat> and, and lots of things like that. So many interesting subjects. We had a World War II German medical team, which of course would go beautifully with this, wouldn't it? Um, and so many of these things that they brought out this year, as well as their own Ukrainian um, subjects like the Cossack, or the MRAP vehicle, that was a very nice one as well. That was an excellent kit. Um, some really nice, interesting and unusual subjects. And there's a quality to the moulding. I said a few weeks ago that they seem to get literally better with every kit. You can see slight evolution from kit to kit with the new tools. You know, they're really doing a great job with the tooling and the design of the uh, the tools. They just need to work on things like their, uh, some of their instructions and, and these... Uh, Deciding whether it's a good idea to have a masking set, I think. Especially when you can't... I don't think any modeler wants to do their own masks for 130 windows on a, on a bomber. Anyway, another one here. I mean, this has got quite a lot of windows on the Beaufort. It's another one that made me think about it, actually. And this gopher, that's also got a lot of glass with it. So they seem to like aircraft with a lot of glass with it, but they're not giving us the... <laughs> they're not giving us the, uh, the means to actually mask and do the, the framing. So, if, <clears throat> if I was to give them advice, I'd just say, yeah, uh, I, I think about that in the future. But this year in particular, I think it's uh, absolutely amazing the way they've performed. And they've outperformed everybody, as I said. So, they are my kit supplier of the year. Not because I get these without charge, you know. Uh, I mean, I get kits that are perhaps not particularly my subject matter, I don't know. Um, but that, that's not the point. Um... This is why I tend to pass the kits on, you know. But, uh, so that, that doesn't really influence me particularly. Um, if I was paying for these and I was getting, just buying one or two or three of them, um, or getting them as gifts, I would feel exactly the same, you know. Because they're just a pleasure to actually go through them, you know, and to see the, the way that they're evolving their quality and uh, becoming a leading supplier. I mean... They're definitely in the top five manufacturers in the world now, ICM, no question, in my mind anyway, that's my opinion. Um, would I place them above Airfix? <laughs> I think that's a hard one because obviously Airfix has got a very long history, <clears throat> so you can't really compare them in that respect. But certainly in recent times, in the last year, 18 months, I think that they've outperformed Airfix, Ravel and Tamiya. Um, Zoki Moore is a sort of slightly strange one because they're not quite so um, such a big company and, and they tend to do big projects infrequently. But I, I just don't think you get better value from any model kit at the moment than you get from ICN. Uh, I mean, obviously there's others uh, in Ukraine that are also having this difficult situation to actually try and manufacture it. You know, we've had Mini Art, we had their, um, their new interesting kit, which was the uh, P47 Thunderbolt, the D25RE, uh, the bubble top. Um, that was a nice kit. Not too many minor reservations, but overall superb, you know. Um, and we've got, you know, Clear Prop have come out with some lovely kits this year as well, also in the Ukraine. Models Fit, etc. A model. There's a lot of manufacturers there, as I say. But nobody is... Nobody is um, releasing with the frequency and the innovation and the interesting subject matter that ICM are. Uh, and, and as I say, they've been in a league of their own. So for 2023, I have no compunction, irrespective of how I obtain the kits. They're the best manufacturer of, the, of this year. I've outperformed everybody. And I would say to the others that I've mentioned on that list, you know, pull your socks up because every one of those companies has underperformed. And they know they have, they know they have, compared to other years. You know, and those other companies I mentioned, um, the big names, their country hasn't been invaded. So there's not really, they don't have any excuse at all. It's strange, really. 
um, there's, it's hard to quantify in your mind just how impressive ICM have been this year, 23 in particular. So uh, I take my hat off to you at ICM. Thank you. Thank you very much for sending the ones for me to review. Please keep doing what you're doing. I know that one or two uh, suggestions there, you can, constructive criticism. But I think that obviously you need, to, you know, over time you need to move forward and do things slightly differently from time to time. We all have to learn, you know, as we go through life, whether we're individuals or companies, uh, and change, make small changes to improve things. And that's all it is. They only need to make small changes. I mean, they have great artwork. They come in a really nice solid box. I've not had one yet where there's been actual transit damage in transit, even though my courier service, uh, the par parcel force from the Royal Mail, are not, not very good. I have a nasty habit of dropping the, the package. But they're so well packed, everything's solid, you know, they make it really... There's no rattle, is there? It's nothing, you know, and that's still seal, that's from the factory I've owned it. Everything is solid and really well packed. It's a box within a box. They've got so many things that other people don't do well. I mean, let's just talk about people, you know. Um, Revel, their packaging is fairly dire. They have everything in one bag that's quite loose in a silly box that is not the right shape or size or design and everything arrives and you often get broken parts quite commonly in Revel kits. Um, now these guys, um, it's almost like they've taken a look at the market and said, right, well, we're going to do it right, you know. So it's very impressive, you know, and I'm not sure what, what, what more I can say about it really, except to say that um, it's absolutely, uh, it's very heartwarming and it fills you with enthusiasm for their product when you see the thought that goes into the packaging and the artwork. It just starts off on a positive note and it, and it generally carries on like that as you go into them. So it's been a real pleasure for me this year doing these reviews for them. It's been, uh, uh, it can be a little bit time consuming, but it's no effort at all because it's uh, such a pleasure, you know. Um, and long may it continue. I'm very happy to carry on doing that. It's been brilliant, really. Uh, and I just hope we can carry on. And I'm saying, I'm looking forward to this Marauder. I'm sure most people are. That's going to be a nice one, I'm sure of it. Um, so if you're thinking about... You want a nice B26, you want to get, get your name down and get pre-ordering that one as soon as possible. I'm not sure the exact dates. Uh, I think it's going to be late Jan, early Feb when people are probably going to see that. But we shall see. <coughs> we shall see. Anyway, there we go. So that's uh, my take on ICM. I mean, it's a company that's got a quite a long history of the back catalogue. I could have got the catalogue out again, which I've shown before. Um, and they have got uh, sort of a history, quite a lot of Soviet subjects, which some of those have dropped, actually, for obvious political reasons, you might say. Um, there, were, there were a couple of items I actually asked them for, and they said, no, we've, we've dropped that one, which I fully understood. Um, and they've got a long history of doing figures, and they've done ships, you know, they're, they're, they've been going for, what, 25, 30 years or so? They're, you know, they're not, they're not a new company. But they've really evolved well, um, and if they can do this when they're in the middle of this terrible geopolitical situation in their country with an invasion, you imagine what they'll be like when, when things calm down in the future if peace breaks out, which we hope it will. Just imagine how strong they might become in the future. It's, I mean, they could be the, the they could become the biggest kit manufacturer in the world if they carry on like this, you know, over time. But we'll see. We don't want them to get too big, for, you know. And they, I say, because they do quite a lot of interesting... You wouldn't call them... How can I put this? You wouldn't call them a manufacturer who chooses safe subjects. That's what's nice about them, though, isn't it? Um, some of them are safe-ish, like that's probably safe-ish. But things like this one, maybe not so. These two, less so. These two, not too bad, you know. But they're quite adventurous and imaginative. You know, they've got... They're trying to, to do things, um, perhaps, that other manufacturers have passed by, subjects that other people have skipped over. And I think it's working for them. I think it's working for them, and there's few people have got a bad word to say about them, apart from, you know, something as I say. Minor lack of detail on one or two kits. The masks, and one or two of the instructions could just perhaps have a bit more detail to them. But the, the, they're such small criticisms, such small faults, compared to their competitors, you know, that it's uh, it puts them in a very, very positive light with many, many modellers in the, in, in the hobby, you know. Anyway, that's my take on them. Um, I say, uh, where they sort of rank, 
Marks out of 10, I think you'd definitely give them 8.5, 9 out of 10, wouldn't you? Absolutely no, no reservation at all as a manufacturer. Uh, and, you know, when you bear in mind, if you factor in the situation they're under, it's close to 10 out of 10, isn't it? 9.5 out of 10, if you, if you take that into account. So, well done to ICM. And uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what on earth they're going to come out with for next year. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, it'd be nice if they did a, a swordfish. That would be an interesting subject. Um, but they just seem to mould them with such creativity and so sharply. Uh, they're getting, you know, they're, they're up there with Tamiya on some of the moulding quality of the new tail work. It's very, very impressive. Anyway, I wish them the very best of luck and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody at ICM. Thank you very much for your uh, choosing me to do these, uh, these reviews for you as well. That's not coloured my judgement in any way though. Um, but it has probably enabled them to have a bit more exposure than they would have. I know I'm not the only one, I think there's one or two other people that do reviews that they've, they've supplied them to in a similar way, but um, they just, they're just creating a positive buzz in the hobby, I think, that's kind of, without them, if you took ICM out of this year, suddenly it's been a bit of a, suddenly it looks like a downbeat year with a very few releases and no you know, only a couple of major highlights really and not the numbers that you would normally expect. So they have really sort of almost made up the difference for the other competitors of theirs that have fallen a bit short. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to give them nine and a half out of ten. Let's say nine to nine and a half out of ten. That sort of zone. I think that's fair. And that's a very high rating. And uh, I can only think of two others that are close to that. Um, but I won't, we'll talk about them in a different video. So thanks very much to ICM for their excellent performance this year. Some wonderful, wonderful work they've produced. Beautiful kits that are very um, exciting to actually open and, and share with you on YouTube. And I hope, long may it continue next year. Let's hope we get some more. So thanks very much to ICM. Thanks very much to you for watching. And I hope that I can bring you more exciting ICM reviews in the not too distant future. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, thanks for watching, and bye for now.